Hello there everyone and welcome to episode 4 of us in Kaizo Redux in which we're playing as the Kingdom of France. We've been preparing for a war to retake the homeland, um, but uh, well, it's only July 10th, 1939, we need more fuel, we need a lot of things. But Pierre de Coubertin dies. Pierre de Coubertin, born in 1863, historian, educator, journalist, founder of the International Olympic Committee, has died of a heart attack at 74 years old. Born into a royalist family, but rallied into the Republic. He turned down the opportunity of a military career and instead dedicated his life to pedagogy and sports, himself a proficient athlete, promoting the integration of physical activity and education. <clears throat> but Coubertin has had an even greater objective, popularized sports by internationalizing them and then for them to become an instrument of peace and greater understanding between the peoples through peaceful competition and sportsmanship. Hoping to further his utopian goal, de Coubertin returned to ancient Greece and a Panhellenic Games and the first Olympics in almost two millennia took place in, 19, in 1894 in Athens. But even though a born Olympics couldn't prevent the madness of the Great War, and following the revolution, the Baron had fled to Algeria like so many others, already heartbroken by the death of the, at the front of two nephews, the diplomatic blunder of 1924 Berlin Olympics that neither Francis attended, and the subsequent establishment of the Spartacades left de Coubertin a broken shell of a man, his dream crumbling before his eyes. <clears throat> Following the announcement of his death, the government nonetheless put out a statement praising him, and the Greek government has announced its intention to build a monument honoring the Baron in Olympia. The important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle, right? We're seeing if we can actually break through here. We might not be able to. It looks like we won't be able to. Rise of the Vaz. Well, if we're not getting that, well, we're going to hold off here real quick. What can we do? We can push him back. These guys are pushing really hard against us now. We might actually come back over here and help defend, maybe. Because it looks like this is not going so well. So how about y'all get over here? Expiation. <clears throat> the 14th of July, 1939. Marks uh, the 150th anniversary of the fall of Bastille, traditionally considered the start of the French Revolution. Um, which would eventually take the Kingdom of France from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional one, then shortly after the proclamation of the French Republic. The Republican regime immediately got to work to thoroughly destroy France from the inside. <clears throat> Gutting her traditions, cutting her off from the faith, and turning the elder daughter of the church into the goose. Uh, intending on spreading atheism, terror, and destruction the world over. Those who bravely stood against this parasitic beast were mercilessly crushed. Um, and hundreds of thousands of innocents were martyred on the altar of liberty, equality, and fraternity. Though the Republic eventually fell thanks to the machinations of the Posta Bonaparte, the seeds of the revolution plan had continued to plague France until far too recently. <coughs> Excuse me. As such, King Jean III has decreed that a week of mourning and commemoration of the victims of the revolution will take place with daily masses and processions to expiate the sins committed by our people not so long ago. However, this week's celebrations will be organized all over our territories to celebrate the counter-revolution and recent restoration of the rightful monarchy, as well as our hopes to soon extinguish another revolution. Long live eternal France. Very good. And they are fighting up here, so like we established last time. How are we doing over here? We need more of that, we need more civvies, we want to trade away our civvies for everything like that. Um, would you be able to win? Yeah, looks like you were able to win. Nice. Let's see what happens. I want you guys to go here. Argentinian free territory, eh? Burgos, yes. Oh! Okay then. Interesting. Give it a moment. And there you go. I'm gonna wait. Schneider, of course. Export focus. Limited exports would probably not be bad, but still, I mean, we're not doing terribly with all this stuff, too. So. I'm kind of okay with where it's at currently. Federal stuff, what's going on here? Anything interesting? Uh, they're attacking a little bit here and there. Probably push them over the river, in all honesty. There you go. Hmm. Good. So now we've all that political power. There's nothing to do with it until we get to a higher stage. Get that stuff done too. IDC, nothing. Political actions, nothing. Super event options, nothing. So it is what it is. We need more recovery rate too. It's August 4th. So trading of ships, vintages. October's traditionally been the time of the vintage, great harvest for winemaking, and the occasion for popular festivities. Wine, of course, being incredibly important in French culture. <coughs> Viticultures are in a region that is populated in the vast majority by alcohol abstinent uh, Muslims might seem peculiar, but Algeria is well suited for growing grapes with its warm, sunny climate. Wine making has historically been one of the engines of French colonization of the region, promoting the development of much land and infrastructure, quickly becoming the go to enterprise for prospective colonists of relatively little means and the principal source of income of the colony since exile. Business has, of course, been booming. 
A viticulturist can barely keep up with the demand as hundreds of thousands of Frenchmen each year consume bottles after bottle and illegal importation of wine from the metropole is of course impossible. Though Algerian vintage is still considered a somewhat lower quality by much of our French population, that remembers fondly wine from Bordeaux of Beaujolais or Beaujolais it is slowly gaining some prestige thanks to the hard work of exiles aiming to bring production up to the standards of the motherland. Perhaps one day these wines will be renowned as these, those of the metropole. Beggars can't be choosers, Sante. Uh, they're getting hit pretty hard. I don't think this guy's going to win there, so we're not even going to attempt that. Just hold out. That's all you can do for now. Hold out. They're doing fine. They're doing fine. Um, you know, push them over probably. Tip the scales, please. If we possibly can, we need more arty still. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Fine, we'll grab this one. Boop. Any more arty? Yes. This is captured CS8 arty, but whatever. There you go. Sport native elites, which is great. Liberty through authority. Well, we read this one last time, so we're going to do this one next. Although the creation of authority in cities is used all too frequently by tyrants, authority can perf exist perfectly uh, without tyranny and indeed is needed to avoid tyranny. Only through the authoritarianism of the state can we keep at bay global finance, the four states, socialism, and every other evil waiting to oppress the French people. Our authority alone is what guarantees genuine liberty and supporting native elites. Oh, and living war too. Uh, in order to entrench acceptance of French rule, <clears throat> the government has moved to extend Morassa's ideals of localism and decentralized government to Africa. Consolidating the long-standing alliance between French colonial rule and native monarchs and chiefs, as such. Uh, we must find a place for these native leaders. Some within the government believe that it would be fitting to make them peers of the realm, or on equal footing to French aristocrats, while others believe it would be greater to give them self a nominal, nominal self-governance or their lands on the condition on the loyalty of the French crown. Make them French noblemen within the kingdom. Give them the autonomy in exchange for loyalty to France. Yeah, that's fine. Living war across the med. The med. <coughs> Storm clouds gather. Government offices in Algiers are being flooded with reports from the Metropole informing us that a war between the Commune and German Empire is imminent, and that the Socialist government is mobilizing its troops in an effort to retake Alsace Lorraine. <coughs> Everyone in the government and command know that this day is coming, but it still came as a major shock. The coming months and years will doubtlessly be the greatest test in all of our history, and every true patriot will have to be prepared to give up everything, so that France may be free once again. Phase 3, yes. And they are just beating crap out of us, aren't they? I'll say it's ultimatum. <coughs> Excuse me. Oof. And the world's at war. Great. The world at war. Oh, fantastic. Hmm. That's pretty good. I want another city because we can invest that and sell stuff. <coughs> Screw some more. Doesn't look like you'd really win there, but if you had two divisions, help you out too. Well, maybe. Especially their force in the defense. Make sure the Reich's packed. Yeah, maybe. Actually, we oh, because they went to war, so the Italian Civil War resumed. That's fine. We got planes being built here too. It's great. Either, but whatever. Nice, good stuff. As long as they don't go to war next, it's fine. They're war in Nepal, huh? Take over Spymaster at Saint Attaché. Eh. We don't like either one, we hate you. We could probably get a lot. Oh, they won't accept. Can we approve relations? We we'll try that. We have a political power port, why not? Oh, hello. The Tour d'Algerie. The Tour de France was one of the most popular sporting events before the exile, drawing enormous crowds along its path all over France. Though cycle sports have not dropped in popularity after the Belle Creek, the current situation makes organizing a Tour de France a little difficult. 
Worse, despite the ban on such activities, many of our compatriots tune into Communard Radio every day during the month of July to follow the progress of the race with cafes turning into listening parties and law enforcement being awfully lenient, often even discreetly listening to the results themselves. Something had to be done to prevent red propaganda being directly broadcast to our people, and that way, and this year was finally created a Tour de Algeria. Going through the most major towns of the Algerian littoral, such as Orleansville, Oran, Bonn, starting and ending in Algier, even with a detour through Tunisia. The race was a massive popular success, giving bicycle racing fans the euphoria of a national sporting competition they had seen for, so, for close to two decades by now. And with a win <clears throat> by French cyclist Roger Lapabie, boosting national pride, we have every reason to make this competition a yearly event, despite the whispers of killjoys that we might be settling in exile. Let's see, it's just as good as the original. And then the kingdom of born. At last, after every trial and tribulation, the great kingdom of France stands proud once again, confident in the justice of its system and the righteousness of its purpose. United under his majesty and Maurras's cabinet, with the military's loyalty assured, we stand ready to liberate our French brothers and sisters in the commune and restore French greatness to the world. Viva la France et viva le roi. It'd be a shame if you got encircled. Final struggle. Active for 30 days. Effects when removed. We're not, we're not, I don't, not plan to go to war just yet, but still. Good. Improved war processing is very good. Now we're looking for 1940 stuff eventually, because it's already September. Victoral. She's looking pretty good overall. We'll like some rocket artillery eventually, too. <coughs> 29, military police. Uh, we don't have it yet. I mean, these guys are alright. I'd probably expand would be really huge. Um, mm, Garrison Cologne. I don't want to spend too much army XP right now for all this stuff, too. Maybe we went ahead and did this. I removed a thousand. It's not terrible, but not great, not bad. Um, you might be able to win if you help him out. You might be able to. You here? Probably not. Keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building. Do not stop building. For the love of God, do not stop building. Car's not looking great. These guys are really strong. Now we're doing better down here than anywhere else. This is strange. Mm. Did you guys win here, maybe? Potentially? They're winning slowly down against these guys. Oh! I gotta finish that off real quick. Nice. Hello. Journal de Cour de Campagne. Mm, it's loaded down, but I don't care. Today, the grand prize of the Académie Française, one of the oldest and most prestigious literary awards in France, has been awarded to Georges Benanos for his novel entitled The Diary of the Country Priest. Published earlier this year, finding great critical and commercial success. Through the touching story of a young priest in a small village in northern France, <clears throat> Uh, uh, ben Nanos tackles themes such as spirituality, death and the battle between good and evil, destiny and the role of the church under an anti-clerical regime, but also selflessness, hope, salvation, and grace, struggling with the lack of authority, with the lack of funds, with the growing impiety of his flock, and with local authorities oscillating between derisive mockery and outright hostility, the parish priest puts extreme zeal and selflessness into attempting to save the souls of his parishioners, sometimes failing into, falling into disrepair, but... Um, and never giving up this fight, a fight perhaps lost in advance, but a fight bringing him closer to God. Culminating, uh, with the conversion of the chairman of the local council, the book ends on a bittersweet note to the young curé himself dying shortly after his stomach cancer, uh, uttering softly all his grace. A monarchist, uh, but praising the spirit of the revolt of 1789, violently opposed to syndicalism, but just as violently opposed to the bourgeoisie. Close to the action francais, but often conflicting with their views, family Catholic, but also criticizing clergy more concerned with order than salvation. Um, considering himself neither left or right wing. 
Let's have the Christian. George Bananos is a man full of contradiction, nevertheless, with his diary, a work full of a sincere faith in spirituality. He has such a whole nation, if not the whole Catholic world. L'enfer c'est de ne plus amir. Yes, exactly that. Well, oh, that must pass. German Japanese War. Oh, they're fighting with Finland. Interesting. Uh, no, we're good so far. God, they're just killing themselves here, aren't they? The refining is good, good, good. Um, uh, planes. Especially 1940 planes. Some of the best of the best that you can possibly get. Better processing is good. Um, cannons. Yeah. What are we missing now? Lots of arty still. <laughs> arty and support equipment. The normal stuff. Anti-air, anti-air, art. Ooh, that's a lot of arty. Mm. Need more organization first. They're pushing into Germany just a wee bit, but these guys are pushing into Russia because they're still fighting. Yep, they're still fighting on that front too. What a mess. Orangina, soda de naranjina. Oh, it's a secret recipe in distinct bottle shape. The new refreshing orange soda developed by Pierre Noir, Leon Breton, has quickly become a massive success in the cafes of Algiers, particularly with the youths. Some say the shrewd businessmen even hired students and soldiers on leave to order to, to order the drink. If that rumor is accurate, the strategy is effective, making Orangina immediately effective. And trending kickstarting this popularity. Already coffee houses all over the colonies are ordering crates after crates of the sugary drink. A boom to be sure to stimulate the agricultural sector. The climate of Algeria is perfectly being suited suited to cultivate the citrus fruits. I think we might be more beneficial down south, maybe, because they're starting to concentrate their forces here too. Especially around here-ish. But I could be wrong. Kingdom of Born, very nice. So what's next? The worst part runs It's not bad. Down at the Med. Without master of the Mediterranean, any effort to transport forces to the shores of the metropole would be entirely futile. Furthermore, we can achieve genuine naval control over the sea. We can secure new trade routes without disrupting communal supplies. Uh, <clears throat> and guard a new procedure within the region. As such, it's crucial to impress further into shipbuilding and naval building. Ooh, but planes, I want planes too. And we're gonna go with centralized control. Speed, nice. Up next, what is next? Global presence. We're probably gonna go with this, but we don't need it immediately yet. Smoke and fire. Metropole invasion preparations. Everything within the nation must be solely focused on reclaiming our rifle homelands. Well, we could. Engineering schools. Bold attack effort's pretty good. I'll go with that one. Good. Nice. 
Kids love attacking, don't they? Oh man, they're forcing the defense too. That's pretty costly. Bob the Vo? Huh. Oh, and they cut off one of their own divisions too. Nice. Oh, wow. Oh, hello. Oh, Alright, whatever. Rubber. Good. Oh. So now they're fighting. Moscow Court's fighting Dona Adrian Boom, which is not having fun. Oh! Wow, that's disgusting. What the heck happened here? Must be European. Happy 1940, everybody. This is the year we'll probably get a war, too. So in the meantime, we're going to stop training. Ah, oh, two more cattle ships. Good. Or, I should say screens. They're not cattle ships, but screens. You, I'm not sure which one's the best one to do. I'm going to go with at least like cruiser speed and damage. And I'm going to wait and see. Dark Angel disappears. Jean uh, Memos, nicknamed the Archangels, a veteran pilot who returned to airmail transport after the war, becoming a pioneer in the uh, field and accumulating countless feats of adventure, such as surviving a crash in the Sahara and captivity at the hands of the rebel Turags, becoming the first to cross the South Atlantic from Senegal to Brazil and the first to cross the Andes by plane. Um, his exploits are told like epic tales in newspapers and newsreels, and has become something of a national hero, even getting involved in politics with Colonel de la Rocque's CDF and advocating for the development of air travel. But a few days ago, on his 25th cross-Atlantic flight, the aviator disappeared. Circumstances are still unclear, and the fate of Memos is still unknown, with headlines are saying, The disappearance of the Archangel, an article sounding more and more like eulogies with each new edition. The whole nation awaits with bated breath, any news from the Atlantic. He survives worse, right? He's done, he's done worse, right? Survived worse. Maybe not done worse, but at least survived worse. Phase 4. With the trans Saharan Railway complete, we'll be able to now send troops by rail. Perfect. Exactly what we want. Good. Miracle in the South Atlantic, look at that. After more than a week without news from Eugene Mamos and the crew of the La Croix 300 Crew de Sud, however, the dog was left for our safe return home. Their safe return home. Oh, cannons. Yeah, that's right, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> however, today a miracle happened. Uh, Mimosa and his exhausted, sunburned, thirsty, but very much alive crew were found drifting in the ocean by a Brazilian ship. The news, just like the pilot, quickly crossed the South Atlantic and spread like wildfire, cinemas and theaters even interrupting their programming to inform the audience. Public relief is palpable. The government has put out an official statement thanking the Brazilian authorities, and a hero's welcome is already being planned for the Archangel. Every failure to survive gives us strength to succeed next time. Is very bad here. Um, you're gonna actually pushing strength, anyways. Uh, rail. Yeah, this is what we need here. Send you this direction. Yeah, that's good. So, following the liberation, as we push further into the commune, we only need more and more equipment to reach the, uh, and sustain the liberation campaign. However, the state must even go further in its investment in the army, securing the safety of our forces and supply lines, and the quality and quantity of the equipment. No matter how tightly the economy has already been squeezed, more is always needed. Citizen soldier ideal. For centuries, the tradition of citizen soldier, the common Frenchman called to war in times of need, has been crucial to our military prowess. The idea underpins Darlan's expansion of troop numbers. And we should further reinforce it through the mandatory infantry training for all able bodied adult men, so that if needed, they can be called to serve the nation in its hour of need. And then rocket artillery, too. Because rocket artillery is actually very, very good. Ooh. Now they are fighting on the, in the hills and mountains, but still. There you go. Can you get over? That would be very beneficial to us if he could get over. At least with the Carlists. That's good.
Oh, there goes Bulgaria. Old Madrid, Eid. Nice. Supply is super bad here. Chapel of Banfora. While some missionaries were originally sent to the region a year ago, they uh, were called and sent to a different site soon after arriving in the village. In their place, the local carpenter from Bobo de Olasso has taken the work into his own hands. He recently completed the construction of a chapel in which to preach the word to the waiting world around him. The harvest is plentiful in Benfor with nearly a population, reaching 150,000 people, including many pagan tribes. May his work serve as an example to others across the continent. The carpenter calls his people to him. Nice. You win either one, six or four. Yeah, we're losing here. Not ideal. So this plant production good. Uh, so supply is bad because it's cutting through here, so we need these tiles really badly. I'll spit our volunteers looking. You're still fighting down here, don't aren't you? That's pretty bad. Ah, oh, good. Need more rubber still. What are we missing? Besides artillery. More artillery. Okay. Understood. Uh-huh. Yep, makes sense. Armenia is gone. Good, good, good. We got this tile. We need this one left. You absolutely have to capture this so we can get supply through here. I'm not going to destroy any more enemy divisions. I'm going to throw you over here too, just in case. Good. There we go. Now we can. Don't shift shift your lines over too much. We have to out so much over here. Good. We might be able to win here, maybe. Maybe not. No, definitely not. That's fine. How about here? Ooh. That was. I understand why they did it, but. Very nice, very nice. And there's no guarantee that we even get these guys as allies anyways, too. So close. Good. Notre Dame de l'Atlas. A new abbey has been found on the heights of Atlas Mountains. Located in the outskirts of the village of Teperin, uh, meaning Gardens in Berber, Our Lady of the Atlas was founded by the French Trappist monks hoping to teach modern agricultural techniques to the indigenous. They have already gone to working pl uh, work planting vines and vegetables, implementing beehives, as well as organizing more efficiently the harvest of the thousands of fruit trees on this sizable property. Though small, the community hopes to attract more members seeking a life of work, prayer, and service to the natives, with whom relations have so far been peaceful. But far from being the only uh, monastic community in a similar situation, Catholic media and hierarchy have nonetheless praised the latest example of religious coexistence. Whether well, see the Abbey as a shining example of the civilizing mission of France and her colonies, however, some express worry. The community is far from the centers of colonial life, and most importantly, the garrisons, but the monks have assured that they have nothing to fear from their neighbors and that they are, in any case, under the protection of the Virgin Mary, to whom they have erected a great statue overlooking this valley. Christians, Muslims, we are all the sons and daughters of the Most High. We also need to start working on some research for ships and whatnot, too. Very important. We're good with that. Cities so we can trade more stuff still. What else are we lacking here? More arty and support equipment. Well, we're out. we can't buy any more. Support equipment. 
Alright, we can't buy any of that stuff. Are we good on... We're okay on anti-air for now. I don't know, I'm taking forever. I just want to really... If we're committing this much, we should commit all the way and make sure we, the Carlos win too. Spot liberation. Nice, good stuff. Rocket already. We're getting there. Good. Nice, there we go, that's good. Cannons, heavy machine guns. I want to get a heavy machine gun done first. Uh -huh. Good. See view. Ah, there they go. Wall Gibraltar's nice. And once these guys are done, we're gonna go over these guys because they have expanded twice, but not very much. Um, these guys are doing quite well against the Russian state as well. Poland's looking pretty thick. Look at that. Oh. Now uh, two infantry divisions are going to hold in. Sorry, we just have to hate the Reds here, because they deserve to die. I'm not sorry about that at all. Lefew. The past few weeks, something strange has been happening in Algiers. A man calling himself Francois-Henri Promete has been organizing political, mystical gatherings, attracting a growing number of curious onlookers with some even turning to believers in the strange creed of this fire of Prometheus. The man declares he is a master of a political movement called the Few, the Fire, the New Man, who has come to restore hope in the hearts of all Frenchmen. From a stage adorned in banners featuring the party's cult symbols, the phoenix of wheel and thunder, he leads ever-growing crowds in repetitive chants such as, Through our fire she will be reborn, her faith will be perpetual, her genius will shrine, France will be eternal. Since the man's political platform seemingly does not go into any more depth than these charismatic and deranged rants, nothing is done at first glance by the authorities. As the crowds grow, grew however, a cursory uh, investigation was initiated by our intelligence services. Shockingly, they found that this Francois-Henri Primite had never existed, as merely the pseudonym of Maurice Delany. A farmer from Normandy, who, after brilliant studies at the National Institute for Horticulture and a brief stint in politics, has seemingly lost his mind. More worrying, however, is the important funding that the man receives from unknown sources. Some within the Bureau suspect coming under influence, which should be done. Oh, that was fun. Just find a nice mental asylum. Ministry of Naval Affairs, which I read before. I also read Ministry of the Air. And they'll read about a world class Navy. Most of the French Navy accompanied their government in exile to North Africa, as such, our Navy is large, but many of our ships are outdated. In its current state, the Navy could defend our shores. But it's uncertain how it would fare if someone were to attempt to contest our hold in the Western Mediterranean. We will strive for large scale overhaul. Pepe Lomoco. Pepe Lomoco is a melodrama star starring rising actor Jean Gabin and the already infamous or famous Meryl Balim has quickly found great success at home and even abroad. Set in Algiers, particularly in the labyrinthic and exotic old town, the Caspa, the movie tells the story of Pepe, played by Gabin. A former big shot in the Parisian underworld, now in hiding, and then trying to catch him. Both law enforcement and syndicalist agents looking to put down once again and for all a major organizer of the black market within the commune. Settling in comfortable exile, rebuilding a criminal empire, and the gangsters soon thrown off balance by the rival of Gabby, played by Balin, mistress of a prominent businessman looking to slum it among natives and immigrants in the sent to a dangerous world of the Caspa. To strike up a relationship, igniting the jealousy of Pepe's mistress, this love triangle is followed with great interest by the police, who use the two women to slowly push the gangster to take more and more risks and eventually leave hiding. 
surrounded. Noi is doomed as a matter of time. Facing an eternal imprison, eternity in prison, or assassination by red agents, Pepe instead decides to go out on his terms, committing suicide as he spots Gabby in the distance. A gripping, suspenseful tale of love and treason, with his tear drinking ending entirely shot on location, it's hardly surprising that the movie has found such tremendous success, some seeing it as a classic, and Pepe, quintessential anti hero, criminal but principled, has become a bit of a youth icon as many identify with the situation at the crossroad of two worlds, French and native, as well as his melancholic longing for Paris. This that goblin is sure to go far. And you can see we've already killed off most of the people here in the CNT, and then uh, then we're gonna go to war. Um, we're not trying super hard anymore here, which is fine. I can help them maybe, maybe get St. Louis, perhaps. Uh, but we really need to go to war and start dealing with them. So, and the person on the defense down here, which I'm not super worried about, we're we're still getting them. Um, where I'm a little worried about though is that ooh, I like cannons. Um, we uh, will not be able to invade successfully. That is my biggest worry. Um, but we should still be able to do so okay. Uh, and I'd really need to uh, to make sure um, that we're pretty much ready to go for the most part. And nt 40 I apologize for taking so long with this. Uh, it, I'm looking up a guide because I honestly don't remember. Uh, what I want to throw on for a good 1940s fighter plane. So basically, air for basic medium air warframes. We're done with those. Inner war, eh. Carrier stuff, meh. Transfer planes are okay. So with these, we have enough here. Um, we're gonna go with a one type three engine. We could, or we can go with the type this one. It's even faster. Those raise production costs quite a bit. That's okay for now. Um, do we have drop tanks? I want more range. Uh, let's see. Self-sealing fuel tanks. Yeah. And maybe a thing of armor plates. Hurts your range a little bit, but gives you a little bit of armor, which I do like. And we're going to go with, I'm not sure what the best is, but we're going to go four heavy machine guns at a time. Lots of machine guns. And four light machine guns. So I'm going to wait, unfortunately, but whatever. Range is better. Uh, I got a lot of air attack defense, air agility. Fuel usage goes way up, but I want to use this one. So, basic small. I don't need more rubber. And once the war starts, we got to just, we'll sell everything we have to make more stuff. And so for this one now. Um, I want what? I think for the most part, we're going to save this. Um, what is this? Self. More range, die breaks. I do want die breaks. If armor. I want to get rid of the armor. For die breaks. Bomb locks. I want bomb locks. Anti tank. What do we do with that? We get more bomb locks. Armor piercing bomb locks. A small bomb bay, huh? I'll go with that one. Look at this. Base close air support and prove close air support. That's why I want all that air XP too. I guess since we're here. You should also get a uh, plus air support engine. We've got drop tanks. We've got uh, we need floats. So instead of dive breaks, we're gonna go with floats. That's your max speed, but that's all right. And and so what we got here. Medium torpedo mountings. We have uh, light torpedo mountings. Or a recon camera. Huh? Fighters. We don't need that. Gas. Anti tank cannons. You know, this is not great, but it'll work for now. It's war naval bomber. Improved naval bomber. So we're getting all that stuff. Which is great. So we Ooh. Oh, good job, German Empire. The, the 
how what are the casualties like for this war current wars russian austrian war moscow accord oh wow the second Valkyrie. wow three quarters of a million two million in the rights pact Bulgaria's already dead. Half a million. So they're really not... There's a lot of dead, but they really haven't killed too much of each other off just yet. Just go and finish them off, please. Put up volunteers. Um, you might be able to do okay there. Or just defend for now. What do we got here? Let's see. Automotive designer. Breakthrough. For truck mechanized motorized. Production costs less reliability. Defense better production costs. More armor from mechanized. No. Who are you at war with? Uh, I do not want to go to war with then part of Japan. There you go. Oh, we got him. Let's, let's get our guys back. Naples was going well. All this is done. World class navy. If you don't know about this, please go ahead. Oh, well, most of the French Navy are accompanied to government in exile in North Africa. The Central Navy is large, but many of our ships are outdated. Well, it doesn't affect us. In its current state, the Navy could defend our shores, but it's uncertain how it would fare if someone were to contest our hold in the Western Med. We'll strive for a large-scale overhaul. In African Toulon. Toulon was the primary base of the Mediterranean fleet before the war, but since the exile has been stationed on Lake Bizerta, a large laguna in northern Tunisia, intensely intensely developed by the colonial authorities, or in particular a large arsenal in Ferryville. To meet our ambitions, Bizerta will be overhauled and developed further. If you want to read about Ministry of the Air again, please go ahead, but total air war. Many of the younger generations of officers argue for a large-scale use of the air support for the infantry, but others have also suggested that we should not shy away from using the air force to destroy enemy infrastructure and industry in a more generalized manner. We are not in a position to avoid total war, and turning the enemy's resources to rubble can only help us. You guys are not on the Reich's Pact. You guys are really pushing hard. Which is fine with us. Also, we are giving ourselves a little bit more time here to infiltrate. We are getting a little better here, but still. Now this becomes spy master, yeah. So we get more spies too. Okay, here. Um, the king is. Oh! His Majesty Eugene III, by the grace of God, most Christian king of France, has passed away peacefully at 65 years old in the palace of Algiers. Until his last breath, the king had been eager to serve his country and his nation in the place that was his, a country that he loved with unconditional love for the love of a father for France and for the French, considering that each of his children, having served in the Great War, since his rise as head of the French cap uh, Capitans, he worked tirelessly to propose an alternative to the failing republic and after Maras' faithful call to restore the monarchy to implement the deep reform needed to truly restore the kingdom of France. But the burden of his increased responsibilities proved too much to bear for the monarch, already deeply affected by the defeat in the exile, and has held been on a steady decline for some time. Dauphin had stepped in to relieve his father, but this was enough. And those in the know knew that the passing of the king was the only matter of time, part of Eugene III's dream. To see his kingdom restored had come true, and with his family attending to him in his last moments, particularly his son, the Dauphin, and his grandson, Henri, he knew that the future was assured, that he was leaving the kingdom in good hands, that France would soon be freed, and that all the sacrifices endured by these people and by himself had not been in vain, but at last he could rest. A week of national mourning is decreed, at the end of which King Eugene will be buried. Uh, uh, Jean will depart from this world and now close to God is succeeded by his eldest son, Henri, 32 years old. The energetic young man has been particularly active uh, in working to first towards the restoration and cooperation with the production Francais, since in his, since, then since his father's coronation in the matter of the state. These last few years, bustling with political activity, have made sure the young prince is more than ready as a statesman, as a shrewd politician, and a king to further his father's dream. The king is dead, along with the king, Viva le Roy! So we had Jean III, political power and stability. So now what do we have? We lose political power. Henri the sixth becomes leader. Look, young prince, more political power, stability, and better improved relations maintain this cause. Henri. Oh, oh. Alright. So when do we get these guys back? I want these guys back. That's a job. Okay, we gotta wait a couple days. I don't wanna wait anymore. Ah. We are gonna need way more fuel. So, let's see. Uh, S 
Leroy Smart Leva Leroy. I need y'all to be ready to bomb stuff around here. There's not a lot around here. Um, I need you to stay here. Bomb stuff here. What are you doing here? Tactical bombers, you're just hanging out. That's fine. I want you to hold. Plus, air support can hold. Honestly, you can probably just too. You're not doing anything. Uh, and when you get there, I want you to bomb airports. Anti-air radar. Look at that range. That's pretty good. Yeah, your range is very small, unfortunately. Uh, so you stay here too, probably. Yeah, that's actually really good. Holy crap. Fighters. Not bad. Some of you are okay. Not half bad either. Air consumption is 690 a day. Not great. Um, what else we got here? Strength and resistance efficiency. Trader? Ah, look at this. Nice. Uh, Antara de Islam, a monthly academic magazine dedicated to Islamic studies, <clears throat> has enjoyed a well deserved success even among relative mainstream audience, at least for this kind of publication. Our current exiles led many, particularly academics and clergymen, to seek a better understanding of the faiths of so many of our countrymen. Some out of genuine interest or hope of interfaith dialogue, while others dream of large scale conversion of the indigenous to Christianity. A recent open letter published anonymously in Entera de Islam is threatening the fragile religious equilibrium, however. The letter calling for the formation of Friday Prayer League for the conversion of the Muslims to pray for our strange brothers was well received within the Catholic circles, and would likely not reach Muslim audiences if not for the identity of its author leaked to the wider press in the following days. Father Jean Mohammed ben Abdeljil. Nice. The man was originally ordained to be the priesthood, becoming a professor at the Catholic Institute of Algiers last year. Uh, ten, year, uh, ten years ago, he was his first Muslim student. Coming from a prominent Moroccan family, a brilliant youth, fervent in his faith, he came under the protection of Marshal Laute, who encouraged him to further studies in Algiers. There he met famed Orientalist, Orientalist Louis Massignon and Catholic philosopher Jacques Maritain. He had joined hoping to study the enemy, but a year later he was converted and joined the Franciscan Order. This high-profile conversion had already been swept under the rug due to fears of unrest, apostasy, being a particular act, severe act in Islam. Such fears have been confirmed. The letter, translated and mistrans trans mistranslated, was widely shared in mosques and madrasas and overwhelmingly received with contempt, if not anger, with even threats being directed towards Father Jean Mohammed, who has gone into hiding. Not a good day for dialogue. Hey. Well, we're going in. I wonder if we could actually just pull this off immediately. I doubt it. Oh, you're still preparing. Oh, crap. What's going on here? Finding a couple of subs. Yeah. I'm just moving to reclaim Europe. Good. We're good with fuel still. Gotta protect our navy. Uh, you can probably do that too. Anything about Sea Wolf, Lancer, Screen Protection? I do want um, Torpedo and Cooldown, Silent Hunter. I like Reveal Chance better. Penetrate? Yeah. As long as they don't come naval invading us, it should be a problem later on. Let's do it, whatever. I'll throw you over here. Anything successful yet? Have we hit anything? No, but we're starting to do some pretty major damage against them. Uh, yeah, we can have non fish pack. Okay, so what are we missing here? Because it feels looking okay. You're out of rubber. Not ideal. Raja Authority. Thank you, sir. Heavy bomb. Heavy bomb. Yeah, we like them heavy. Ah. 
Now what do we got here? Air defense for medium planes. These are for medium planes. We have a lot of light planes. Ground attack, agility. Intel over here. That's why I put a lot of radar here too. I don't know if we can actually naval invade here successfully. I would love to be able to. Ooh, some convoys. All right, we're gonna say if this doesn't go well. Well, then you're not gonna see this. Actually, you will see this. I'm not sure how strong you guys are really on the invasion force, but let's try. We're launching everybody. And that being said, we're gonna go ahead and try to come over here and we're gonna try that. Oh, oh, we've land. We're trying to land. Can you try to force it? We've landed. Good. We can keep the landing. Oh, we actually successfully landed. Would you look at that? So now I need you to help defend these. Welcome board. They're all going to be over here. Um, ooh. Honestly, I want you to be part of the garrison force. For now. We might change this later. We probably will. But I do not trust this side down here at all. So, especially Liberia. So there's that. Ooh. And don't forget about this as well as this for now, too. And now I want you guys here. I want you guys to go ham. I want you to go freaking crazy over there. That was actually very good what we just did. Incredibly good, actually. Fighter, fighter. Um, closer support, technical bombers. There you go. Some more fighters. World class navy is great. World class navy, African Toulon. That's probably the best time I've ever naval invaded southern France. Uh, this doesn't help us out at all, but whatever. Anything else? Brave commanders, efficient communications, yes. Be extremely efficient. Smoke and fire. Um, we already invaded, so I'm not going to do that one yet. Expressive barrage. 5% more breakthrough. Honestly, I want more breakthrough, probably, since we're here. I need, I need you guys to go. Like book it. Take as much damage as you possibly can. Let's get all the extra defense, you know. Uh oh. Ooh, that's not good. Fuel, we have a month left of fuel left. Okay, that's okay. Um better marines, better artillery, still ahead of time. Uh we need better ships. Oh, look at this. Yes. Go, 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 go. I'm going to actually send half of you there, here, though. For now. Um. So that helped out the Germans. Oh, man, Belgium's not having a good time. Are they in the Entente? Yeah, they are. They probably got caught with their pants down. Hello, what is this? Oh, of course, Liberia would. Fantastic. And the first elite forces are revert conventional forces simply are enough to combat the oncoming storm. We must innovate. Extort heroism. That's fine. Sort of military presence in Provence. 
mobilize the loyalists in Provence. Yes, please. There's about eight divisions. That's, that's quite a few. For now. It's fine. Boop, boop. What do you want? No, I don't want to fight Japan. I have no reason to fight Japan. Why would I want to go fight Japan? Let the Japanese do what the Japanese want to do for now. Hello. We need naval bombers over here. Bhutan's gone. The coronation of Henri IV. Alright, so this is the case. I actually want to hold all over here and start solidifying everything that we've gotten. This is actually a fantastic first gamble or gamble of stuff we've gotten. Um, after a time of mourning, now it's time to rejoice. The Dauphin Henri d'Orleans has been crowned in the St. Philippe Cathedral of Algiers, taking the regal name of Henri IV. Much like his father's coronation, the ceremony followed as closely as possible the traditions established over a millennium by the French monarchy. After swearing the traditional oaths and being anointed from, with oil from the Holy Ampulia, Ampula, the prince was dressed in the regalia of the kings of France and finally crowned the Archbishop of Algiers. Peers of France and indigenous chiefs then swore fidelity to the newly crowned king, a mass was said, and all headed out of the cathedral. His Majesty, instead of immediately heading back to the royal palace for a private reception, chose to partake in his people's revelry, mainly for some time with the crowd assembled to see the new king in delivering a speech radio transmitted, without the whole empire calling for unity and resolve in the face of the coming hardships, assuring all efforts demanded of France and the people will not be in vain. Popular festivities lasted late into the night, and this morning, two things are clear. The continuity of the monarchy is now well assured, and our nation must now be more determined than ever to free our countrymen from the red shackles of the commune, so that the, one day the kings of France may be crowned in Reims once again. May Henri's reign be long and prosperous. So I got that going, this is good, that's good. Um, but we gotta make, get, oh, where would you look at that? I like that a lot. We need more fuel. Iran, I love calling on the Middle East for more fuel. Liberia demands Sierra Leone, oh boy. The bears long decided the state of Sierra Leone. Seeing there was a kind of brother nation founded by slaves sent back to Africa, but from Canada, uh, Britain, and other old Anglo empires. Now they have issued the French colonial government an ultimatum. Either return these rightfully African lands over to them, or there will be war. Seems like we might be able to push into here too, so let me try that. Let them have it. Oh, that is not good. Hello. Oh, might as well hold there. It's fine. Now defend. Like your life actually depends on it, because it does. Good. Those convoys are good. Good. How many men have we lost? How many are precious? No faction. The Entente's here. Reich's packed. Ah, us. 5,000. Okay. We killed off 5,000. Interesting. We're actually making fuel gain. That's awesome. Is this pills? Boop, boop. Gotta be careful with supply too. I've seen Empire. Six days left. Just beat the crap out of them. I love that we have fuel gain as well right now. Love it. We have a fantastic base. We just we gotta make sure we got a supply, which we should. Um, I'm going to sing down here too, just in case for now. Absolutely not. That's fine. Boop, boop. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, they're attacking hard against us. Oh yeah. As long as we don't lose, we'll be okay. Prepare for our return. Well, we already invaded, so. Ministry of the Air. Um, total Air War, which I read, I think, earlier, but... Um, many of the younger generation of officers argue for large-scale use of air support for the infantry, but others have also suggested that we should not shy away from using your air force to destroy enemy inf infrastructure and industry in a more generalized manner. We're not in a position to avoid total war, and turning the enemy's resources to rubble can only help us in aircraft production. The aircraft industry exploded during the Valkyrie, and the government has made sure to generously subsidize it to facilitate its implementation in Algeria. Since then, preparations for the next war have not stopped, especially since colonial conflicts have given us the opportunity to test their aircrafts. With war, war finally on the horizon, we'll mobilize the industry to the fullest. Um, air coordination centers. 
We'll create a dedicated command center for our air forces so that they are best assigned according to their strengths and weaknesses, instead of letting them be potentially misused by commanders with less experience of air tactics, and ensure that the status of our air forces in the air will be monitored and controlled as best as possible, for example, to mount rescue missions. Um, and I guess DCA network? To prevent any air forces from attacking us on our own soil, particularly in the Corsica, so close to the Red Mainland, mainland we'll develop a network of anti-air craft, artillery batteries, and searchlights highly coordinated with the, by the Ministry of Air. But I think we wanted there. We've actually did pretty darn well in the first episode. I really like how much we've done. We, we're solid here. It doesn't look like we're going to really be able to push this out. We've only suffered 6,000 casualties so far while delivering a few 7,500. Not bad. Uh, unfortunately, Belgium has fell, fallen, given the, the, the coming of the way into Germany. Whatever. They're kicking some really some serious Russian butt. Uh, so, yeah. I guess we're not Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe is a freaking mess. But, hey, if you enjoyed our very successful episode of us literally retaking Provence, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we are going to continue defending against the Red Menace. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.